97 crore voters, that's 545 seats. 20 crore young voters aged 20 to 29, 2% first-time voters. But what if you don't have an election card? What if you're working in Delhi? Can you be an elector at your native place in Uttarakhand? Can a non-resident Indian vote? I'm sure you have these questions. Almost one third of voters, that is people from urban areas, youth and migrants, stayed away from exercising their franchise in the last Lok Sabha polls. But from Chaiwalas to the CEOs, from farmers to film stars, every citizen is a stakeholder. Every voice matters and every vote counts. As the biggest spectacle of democracy kicks in, our voting FAQs will have you covered. I have not done voting yet, so I have no idea. This new time has come and so voting and all this process it seems like a little old, little oldie. I think एक तो जो general electoral process है कहाँ करना है कैसे करना है किस location पे करना है online है offline है तो ये जो basic basic information है शायद वो Gen Zs are not aware of that. Most of the Gen Zs, even me, don't know how to vote. Like we don't know the process exactly. Like them, if you are a first time voter too, then you have finally hit that milestone. You are stepping into the world of democracy where your voice gets its own megaphone, the power to vote. To use this part, you will need to register yourself as a voter. All Indian citizens who are 18 as on January 1st of the year for which the electoral roll is prepared are entitled to be registered as voters in their constituency. First-time voters need to register on the official website of the Election Commission of India or ECI. To register, they must complete Form 6. You can do it online at the National Voter Service Portal. This form holds the key to your inclusion in the electoral roll. Or you can do it offline by filing the application before the electoral registration officers or assistant electoral registration officers. All you need to apply for a voter ID card is one passport size photograph and identity proof such as a birth certificate, passport, driving license, PAN card or high school mark sheet and an address proof such as ration card, passport, driving license or a utility bill. Then you need to check whether your name has been included in the electoral roll of the constituency where you live either at the electoral registration officer of your area or the ECI website. Then you need to check the allocated polling booth and on the polling day show your identity documents then your left forefinger will be marked with the indelible ink. You might think that this is the only way that Indians vote. You go to a polling station and choose who you are going to vote for by clicking a button. But have you ever wondered how are soldiers in the Army, Navy, Air Force vote? The majority of Indian electors vote through the electronic voting machine. These are called the general electors. Then comes the service voters. You can be a service voter if you are in the armed forces, in the security forces employed under the government of India, in a post outside Indian member of the armed police forces of a state and serving outside that state. You can then enroll as a service voter by filling out the corresponding forms. Form 2 is for armed forces, Form 2A is for armed police force and Form 3 is for government officials serving abroad. You can find these forms on the Election Commission of India website. When elections are announced, you will receive your postal ballot. The returning officer of your constituency shall send this to you. You register your vote through this ballot paper. But remember to not put any sign, mark or any other indication on this paper. This ballot vote is then secured by a seal and is sent to the returning officer again. Apart from the armed forces, there are few other people who will vote through the postal ballot system for the very first time. In a historic first, the Election Commission has announced vote from home facilities for citizens above 85 years and persons with disabilities with 40% benchmark. If you are someone who is living away from your home state, you must have wondered, how am I supposed to vote? In 2019 general elections, over 30 crore electors did not vote. One of the main reasons behind this was the migrant population who failed to vote. Imagine a construction worker from Bihar working in Delhi or a resident of Himachal Pradesh working in Bengaluru's IT hub. From which state do they vote from? Bihar or Delhi? Himachal or Karnataka? or should they spend money to go home just to vote? If you are stuck in a situation like this, listen in. You can get your name enrolled in the constituency you have moved to. Sitting in Delhi, you cannot vote for Mumbai. 
If you're working in Delhi now, you need to enroll in the constituency your home falls in Delhi. There are two ways to do this, but one magic word, Form 6. You can either fill the form online through the website of Election Commission of India, or you can even file it offline in the offices of Electoral Registrations Officer. In both these cases, you will need to submit an address proof. The address proof which you can submit includes passport, license, passbook, ration card, IT assessment order, rent, and even your water, telephone, electricity, and gas bills. Once the EC receives Form 6, a booth-level officer will visit your home to verify and obtain a signature on the application form. After this information is verified, your name will be included in the electoral rolls within a week. If you are a student and want to be enrolled as an elector in the place of your college, you will have to submit a certificate by the head of the institution. In 2022, the Election Commission developed a prototype of a remote electronic voting machine. With this machine, domestic migrants do not have to travel to vote. They can simply vote from where they are. This, however, is still in the introductory phase and has not been rolled out yet. As the largest democracy goes to vote from April 19, and if your name is not enrolled in the constituency voter list, you must start today. What if you are an Indian who does not live in India anymore? Can you still vote? Indians go out of the country for multiple reasons, from employment to education. Do they lose their right to vote when they get on that airplane? Well, it's complicated. According to the Representation of People Act 1950, an NRI settled in a foreign land can become an elector. These electors are called overseas electors. There are, however, some conditions to being an overseas elector. The Indian citizen must not have acquired the citizenship of any other country. Also, you cannot be a general elector. When you enroll as an overseas voter, you have to submit a declaration that you did not get enrolled as a general elector. If you are a general elector, you need to give up your EPIC card or the election photo identity card. So imagine a person from Nagaland who has gone to the United States. He or she can vote from their hometown of Nagaland and no place else. To get enrolled, an NRI has to fill Form 6A. This can be done both online or via post. The application must be accompanied by a duly self-attested copy of the relevant documents including passport, photographs and visa details. The booth level officer will visit a person's home for verification. In case relatives are not present or refuse to verify the documents, the officer can go to the concerned Indian mission. After this is done, the name will appear in the separate section for overseas electors, which is the last section of the role of each polling station area. There is a catch in all of this. Even after an NRI is enrolled, they can still cast their vote only in person. So an NRI would have to be present in their constituency at the time of the vote. They would also need to carry their original passport. Now comes the question of how do you cast your vote as a general voter? A lot has changed since the first general elections of 1952. It wasn't until 2004 that India switched to electronic voting machines or EVMs. Before this, the votes were cast using ballot papers. There were separate boxes for each candidate and the voter would drop the ballot paper into the box of his or her choice. The EVM was first conceived in 1977 and was used in all 543 constituencies at the 2004 Lok Sabha elections. Instead of a paper ballot, the official releases a digital ballot and voters cast their vote by pressing a button on the balloting unit for the chosen candidate. EVMs can even be used in areas with no electricity as they can be operated on alkaline batteries. At least one ballot unit, one control unit and one VVPAT make up one EVM. And it can come at a tentative cost of Rs 7900 per ballot unit 9800 per control unit and Rs 16,000 per VVPAT. The EVM is designed for a single post and a single vote. A voter simply needs to press the button against the candidate of their choice and then the red light glows against the symbol and name of the candidate for whom the vote has been cast. Simultaneously, a long beep can be heard which confirms the polling of a particular vote. A VVPAT or Voter Verifiable Papered Audit Trail lets voters physically confirm the choice they've made. A printed VVPAT slip is displayed for 7 seconds before it's automatically cut and delivered to the sealed ballot. The voting data recorded in EVMs can be retained for years and can be extracted if necessary. 
only the authorized engineers of the EVM manufacturers, which is the Bharat Electronics Limited and Electronics Corporation of India Limited, perform the initial check of EVMs and VV pads. This is done under the control of the district election officer and under the supervision of the deputy DEO and representatives of all political parties. The whole process is recorded on video. Digitalization marked the transition from the primitive paper ballot systems and a long wait for results to a more reliable, safe and secure medium for conducting elections. With that, there are also challenges. Political parties allege that EVMs can be tampered with. But the call to abandon EVM is not new. In 2009, when the Congress party was doing well in elections, BJP's LK Adwani voiced concerns about the reliability of machines after his party's electoral defeat. Many political parties also supported the demand to revert to paper ballots. Similar is the case now, where Rahul Gandhi from the Congress party has alleged EVM manipulation. Well, what if an elector doesn't support any of the candidates contesting elections? Then you can opt in for NOTA or none of the above option on the EVMs that allows voters to reject every candidate in their constituency. It was first introduced in October 2013 following a Supreme Court order and has its own symbol on the EVM, a ballot paper with a black cross across it. In 2023 assembly polls to five states, Chhattisgarh recorded the maximum NOTA votes at 1.29%. But what if NOTA votes are higher than the main parties? Does it impact elections? Many have called NOTA a toothless tiger because even if the number of voters choosing NOTA is higher than the number of votes polled by any of the candidates, the candidate who has the largest number of votes has to be declared the winner. Well, that's all the questions that we had for you. Drop any poll-related queries in the comments below and we will answer it for you the next time. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today News Mo.